Hey guys, what's up? It's Stacking Chairs, the youth ministry podcast, all about serving in youth ministry, whether it be youth group or youth camp, whatever God has you serving in, that's what we're talking about. I'm one of your hosts, Josh Balhamus. I'm joined by my fellow host and good friend. Kyle Gray. Josh, I was tempted not to talk uh, just because I was trying to like motion do, uh, you know, interpretive dance style oh, without all the way dancing through. Yeah. Uh, all your, all your, what you were saying. That you would great. only know that though if How you were you know? watching, if you go to our YouTube channel, Word of Life yep. Fellowship, and uh, you search, you can find literally everything. Every episode. Every episode. Also stories about uh, what's happening around the world, even here in the U.S. Stories, we got them. Yeah, we got stories. Yeah. Hey, Josh, Um, there's a lot happening in the world right now. There is a lot. I, yeah, I was just thinking that. I'm feeling a little, I little, mean, uh, a little pressured. Tired. Yeah, a little pressured. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, you're like that. Speaking of pressure, uh, what a you, as, as a peer. Yeah. Um, no, so uh, here in Florida, there are a lot of peers. There and, are a lot uh, of peers. And this hurricane yeah. is going to bring a lot of pressure yeah. to those peers. While this episode airs tomorrow, Speaking the of hurricane peer pressure. will be hitting, actually. Well, I love how we say will be. Could be. Most Could likely be. will be. Most likely will be. Yeah. Um, this usually comes out around two to five in the morning, two to five. Mm -hmm. That's exactly when actually the, the hurricane was like, I'm going to show up when you guys launch the episode. It actually, so it'll be passing by us while the episode is airing. So what, th that's another funny thing to me is just to, to watch this path, man, they are, these things are so unpredictable. Yeah. So if, if you're listening in the late, late future, uh, hurricane Adelia is about to pass us by. Yeah. And there's not another one coming your way, but if you're in Florida, just wait, there is another one coming your way. There probably is. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's always, every year around this time, I always think, oh, wow, we haven't like had any hurricanes yet. And then it's always like, like one hey Josh, day. Could you stop saying stuff like that? I know. Cause then we end yeah, up. It's yeah, like when you're like, Hey guys, this is going to be a short episode. I'm like, Josh, now we're going to go for, for 55 minutes. Yeah. No, but that's the thing is like every year I say, I'm like, oh yeah, we haven't. And then it, uh, there's like a day where they say there's something developing. And then the next day they say, it's going to be a hurricane. And then you check the path and it's like, you see the red cone over your house and you're like, oh. Great. I feel like there's some type of, uh, can I use the word meteoric? Meteoric, sure. Because uh, it's not metric. Because metric is like a scale. Well, it depends on you how know. you're going to use the word. Uh, I is there? I think there's some meteoric tractor beam that just draws the the hurricane to Florida. <laughs> I don't like, know if meteoric is the word for it, though. Uh, I think it is. Okay. Correct me right now in this presence if you think I'm wrong. Oh, you didn't. Okay, okay. fantastic. It goes out the next day. <laughs> um, oh, man. No, so, uh, hey, but we ought, to, we ought to think about doing a live episode. Okay, it would be just fun. a thought. Just a thought. And Let's I would love to Let's know from you guys. So we do stuff at around Giving Tuesday. Yeah. I think stacking chairs ought to do a live episode on Giving Tuesday. We could do that. Although you actually have something you have to do on Giving Tuesday. Did they not? They talked to you about that. No, they didn't. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Well, I, heard, I I was in an email chain where they were talking about you. So I will let you People know. People were this. talking about me? Yeah, they said. Man, my fingers were burning. They said they must have been because they said you were going to be doing some stuff for Giving Tuesday. Oh, cool. Was that, uh, <laughs> was that me and Tommy Sewell again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what, not, that's what we normally do. Tommy, that's, that's, not a, that's not a shot against, against you. I would love to continue to do stuff that with you. But it's going to be, they're going to be in separate locations. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. I'll tell you about it afterwards. Okay, fantastic. Do I cut all this out? This is like internal talk. I, I mean, I don't know. Hey, uh, You know what? We'll put the emails into the link tree so you guys can figure out what's going on as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Great opportunities for Giving Tuesday. Great yeah. opportunities coming up. Uh, but yeah, Josh, right now, a lot yeah. going on in the world. A lot going on right here in Florida with this, with this hurricane that is yeah. coming our way. And so um, we thought about not doing an episode. Yeah. Um, but we thought the hurricane's going to come whether we do an episode or not. Once we're done with this, I'm going to finish editing it and I'm going to go home and finish sandbagging my doors. So, wow. yeah, it's that's, tough that's to do crazy. still. Yeah. That's crazy. It, it, it's, it's amazing to me. So when I lived in Texas, mm -hmm. you, you were worried about the, the tornadoes yeah. and we had tornado sirens. When you lived, when we lived in New York, it mm -hmm. was the amount of snow we may or may not yeah. get and make sure you, you, uh, uh, brush off your roof, yeah. uh, so that it doesn't collapse. Yeah. And now it's hurricanes. Yeah, I'm there's like, always something. There's always something. That's why I want to move to Northwest Iowa, where no, I don't, where I don't the, know. No, I think I feel like that's in her. That's a tornado. That's a tornado. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. even worse than. Yeah, it probably is. It's wide so, open. Hey, but Josh, uh, I'm excited to be here with you today, yeah. and uh, I've I've really enjoyed our our conversation, Josh. Oh you've, yeah. You have you have pushed me to be a better person. Have I? pressured you into you have pressured me. Person? actually i was thinking about it the other day talk, let's talk about our shortcomings yeah. um i was mowing the lawn and i was listening to a book emotional spiritual 
uh, maturity. Mm-hmm. Uh, great book uh, or emotionally mature spiritual. I don't know. I'll need to look it up. I don't know. Um, I'm going to look it up right now because I should have have just known that all because I- I don't know. I read the book. Or actually, actually, I audibled the book. So yeah, I listen to my books now. Do you consider that emotional, healthy spirituality? Emotionally healthy spirituality. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Great book. Highly recommend it. In every book, there's some bones. In every book, there's- Well, I shouldn't say every book, there's some meat. But, um, but yeah. I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but I sat there and I thought, because they were talking about kind of surrounding yourself with people mm. <clears throat> and, uh, and rest. Yeah. And they talked about fasting. Oh, did they? And I was like, stink. We forgot about the fasting. Have you continued to do the fasting? I, I think I did it maybe one other time. You didn't invite me we, into it, Josh? I, yeah, I'm sorry. Wow. It was in the midst of like some stuff. I was just personally going through it, you know? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Hey, that's okay. Didn't mean to not But I just you. want you to know, I appreciated that positive peer pressure because I think sometimes yeah. when we talk about peer pressure, we automatically go to the bad. And I know that we know that there's good peer yeah. pressure, but I don't think we acknowledge the good peer pressure. That's a fair point. That's a Thanks. fair point. Yeah, I didn't even thought about that because we were, I mean, when I, even all my notes that I have here, like the things I was going to bring up about peer pressure, uh, all of them were negative things. But I hadn't yeah. even considered, like, let's talk a little bit. What are some, like... How do we how do we embrace and how do we kind of cultivate relationships where we have positive peer pressure? Well, uh, l- let's go to the basis form. Yeah. Okay, the basis form of positive peer positive peer pressure is some type of a reward system. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, and that reward system may be the praise and applaud of your friends or family. Yeah, well, because peer it's like people right your peers right uh, yeah. or you know again I think you could included in, but like a uh, reward system from your teachers and everybody else around yeah. you is like, man, I'm going to get that. And, and so it's like, no, I'm going to get, you know, yeah. there can only be, unless it's, unless it's upwards, yeah. uh, there can only be one winner. But see, I think, I think of that, like the reward system is more of a, of a, what's the word that's not peer, like a person above you. Right. But, but in a monkey friend, like for instance, yeah. uh, I had, uh, I had a, a friend in uh-huh. high school and she and I had a sticker board. Hated biology. Okay. Hated biology. It was a good class. It was an okay class. Uh, hated biology. Sure. But I remember somehow, Josh, after the first like halfway point or like, you know, checkup spot, both of us had A's. Okay. Both of us had A's. And so she turns to me, she was one of my lab partners. She turns to me and she goes, all right, here's the deal. If by Christmas, both of us have an A, we buy Christmas presents for each other. Oh, but if one of us does not get an A, the other one only buys for for them. And I was like, yeah. okay, great. Well, here's the deal. That was a reward system. And from a peer. But sure. it was, yeah. you know, but it was. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And, I like uh, that. and you know what? What's that? Somehow I kept the A and she dropped it. And oh, she really? was way smarter than me. I remember <laughs> the day walking out because yeah. we had the, we had the like the, the grade, you know, yeah. chart put up there before yeah. uh, before we all went on Christmas break. You guys had like a chart like Oh, out, listen, this guy posted our grades outside of the classroom. I think I remember. And that I happened. did not go to a small like Christian school. I didn't go to a Christian oh, school yeah. at all. Big school. Uh not like a massive one, but you know, I mean, yeah. our our mascot was Bubbles, Josh. I mean, Oh, how, yeah. Come on. Who doesn't know thing? Bubbles? That's yeah. a big school. The Bubblers, okay? Bubblers. It's fun. Okay, Boiling Springs Bubblers, look it up. Um, but yeah, but I, uh, I remember that day and I remember seeing that she lost it and I felt bad. She had a 91.4 and that was our, that was our uh, thing because it had to be a 90, like excuse me, three. 92.4. Cause yeah. we were like, if it's a 92.5, we'll always round up to the 93. Cause our system was hundred to 93 was yeah. an A and yeah. Cause 90, yeah. I remember that, well, in college they switch it. It's usually by 10 points. Yeah. So like a nineties an A. Yeah. Yeah but not in high school. But yeah, so I, I do think there's positive peer pressure. Yeah. I think there's the camaraderie of a team. Yeah, use, well, the gifts, and then, so you're now, now we're moving from gifts to like having a team. Achievements. A team. Okay. Which Achievements. I think you could still say is kind of gifts or rewards. Hey, yeah. we we got that, and so you band yeah. together. But it's it's a group accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. So like there's positive peer pressure on like, hey, we're all going to work hard. I'm, I mean, I can think of examples like uh, playing sports in high school. Like, right. There was times where it's like, okay, if we all work hard on conditioning, then we're all going to be set mm-hmm. for this upcoming sports season. But right. if we all don't work on conditioning, I remember like pushing people and saying like, hey, like, come on, you can push a little you bit got further. This. Yeah, you can push a little bit further. You can go a little bit further, you know? Well, and, and then I think there's the nebulous just, I'm proud of you. Yeah. 
or like, I don't want, or even, and, and I think some people might, you, some people out there may view that this is a negative, but I don't want to disappoint you. Mm. But I don't think that that's always negative. It doesn't have to be. I don't think it always has to be negative. And the idea of, um, you know, I know there were some days, I know there are still some days where I'm like, I don't want to have to call my accountability guys and go, bro, I'm struggling today, you know? Yeah. Um, and part of that is a fear of man that I have, yeah. uh, that I got to work through, that I got to, you know, develop and, and be more fear of God and yeah. more, you know, but, uh, but sometimes I'm like, no, you know what? I don't want to call Josh and go, Hey Josh, yeah. I, I was stupid today. I was, yeah. you know, um, and so just kind of working on that, but let's be completely like, let's just get raw and real mm -hmm. negative peer pressure yeah. is so much more, um, accessible apparent? yeah it's just yeah it's, it's yeah it's a it's an easier target to kind of like work through how do we help the kids in our youth groups and in our our youth ministries how do we help them work through right negative peer pressure right because positive peer pressure is positive right but there's so much because we were talking about this a little bit before there's so much negative peer pressure that is facing the the kids in our youth ministries um differently at a younger age oh than they goodness. were before oh my goodness. so like i mean you have 10 year olds, 11 year olds, 12 year olds who are now coming home and they might have questions about sex. They might have questions about uh, alcohol and drug abuse and things right. like that because their friends, there was just a kid and oh my goodness, there was a kid in a, I think it was a daycare yeah. where a kid brought in alcohol. What? That he got, yeah, he got from his parents' liquor cabinet, brought it in and one of the kids uh, like was drinking the alcohol and they they're like, <laughs> they could smell the whiskey on their breath and they figured it out and fortunately, you know, call poison control and get it all yeah. sorted out. But like, there, there, there's always been accessibility to a lot of things, but now it's celebrated by adults, even just the way, like the music that kids are listening to on the radio. Oh, I was listening to something. So I, I've got this one account on, on, uh, on Instagram that my wife was like, this is your favorite one to go. I'm like, dude, this, this kid yeah. brings me so much joy. My wife like almost ruins it last night, uh, because she goes, sometimes though, I got to wonder, like, is the parent making this kid do mm. this? Or is it, and I was like, oh, oh Influencers, you know, man. man. Um, but the one, the other thing that we're talking about is there's every once in a while, there's a song that this kid does. Mm -hmm. And we're like, I just don't think this is good for this yeah. little kid to be. There was, there know, was a whole. Acting this song, dancing this song, being stupid yeah, yeah, to this yeah. song, you know. There was a whole documentary on Netflix uh, called, uh, was it Cuties? Remember that? I don't know. It was all about uh, like young kids dancing and things like that. See, and, I, but, but that's what I'm saying. Dancing. I think we as parents like, okay, there's the whole old adage of when you get married, you're not going to have all the things that you had had previously at your parents' house. Okay. Okay. But I think sometimes when we have kids, we think, oh, I watched this. Yeah. It's okay. I think this is awesome. Yeah. I remember sitting down and talking to some parents and them going, you haven't watched such and such movie with your kids. Yeah. And, and my first thought was not, well, you know, I don't think it's spiritual for my kids. Yeah. I just sat there and I thought, no, I, I, I don't, I don't want them to watch that. Yeah. Yet. They don't need it. You know, yeah. I don't need them. And honestly, I probably was like, they won't get the humor. Like, I don't yeah. want to waste that movie on them. And then, yeah. be, and then, then be like, uh, dad, we've already watched this. Like we hate this movie. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Fireproof is the greatest movie. <laughs> in yeah, the, you know? Exactly. No, but there's discretion that you have as a 16 year old that you're not going to have as a 10 year old or a 12 year old. Right. Yeah. And, but in your mind, you're like, I remember watching this as a kid, but that was six years. Like they're at a different stage I, in life. I remember my wife and I, within the first year, mm -hmm. maybe year and a half, um, of us being married. Yeah. We were out at target one day and they had those target DVD bins oh, where yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. $2. It was yeah. like, we're going to pay you $5 to take these yeah, DVDs yeah, yeah. off our hand. And she saw a movie and she goes, Oh my goodness. I haven't seen, you know, the Chronicles of the uh, Chronicles of Narnia, you know, part two, <laughs> uh, in, since I was 16 years old. Ah. And I was like, okay, husband move of the year. She walked away and I like, I, I, I say I swiped it, but like, I didn't like, it. <laughs> I stole that $2 I stole, DVD. I stole that $2. No, I Times grabbed it tough. and I walked up and we got it. And then we got home that night and I was like, Hey, you want to watch a movie? And she's like, yeah. And I put it in and she, there was this moment of like, Oh, like you got the movie. And I was like, Oh, great. Yeah. And then like stuff started happening in this movie yeah. that she's looking over me. Cause I'd never seen the movie. Yeah. And clarifier, it wasn't Chronicles of Narnia. It wasn't, it was not Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Yeah, okay. Um, it was not, excuse me, Prince Caspian, yeah. which actually isn't number two, regardless, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I, I was like, 
uh, and she was like, I'm so sorry. But because again, we, I think sometimes we can remember things in hindsight yeah. in better view. And then we, we neglect that. We put it in front of our kids Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we open them. So we open them up to things yeah. that we shouldn't be opening them up yeah. to. Or my kids will come home and will say, everybody else in our class has seen this. And that's where the peer pressure comes. Exactly. Down. Yeah. And that's the thing is we, I think we forget, I mean, there was uh, the book I'm listening to talks a lot about like how in other homes, like how parents are going to show and like, like, all right, you, if your kid goes to someone's house, the parent either has trained up their kid to watch this kind of movie or have this kind of entertainment or be okay with these kinds of things right. by the amount that they're involved right. in their kid's life or not involved. Right. Or, so here's the thing. When you're sending your kid to somebody else's house, you're not sending them to go hang out with just the kid. You're sending them to whatever the parent has allowed right. into that household. Right. And so you have to trust the parent. Right. And that's something I'm kind of starting to grapple with a little bit. I only have a two-year-old. Right. But I'm thinking one day my daughter's going to say, hey, can I go to, and it's like, do I trust this person's parents? Oh my goodness. And but, there is so much that you don't know. Yeah. And what the, like what that kid's going to be pressured, like my child could be pressured into. Right. And you have to, and so it, take that and extend it to as a youth leader. What are the things that we are helping the kids in our youth group work through and what they're going to be pressured into. Right. And even under our noses within our youth ministry. Which is why youth leaders that are listening out there, small group leaders that are listening out there, I would highly recommend, I would highly recommend that you do not talk about all the stuff that you've watched and all the, like, yeah. that's not your way to make a, a connection point um, yeah. with somebody, you know, to sit there and go, I don't need to pick up this to yeah. know what's inside of it, yeah. you know, but the whole idea of, listen, you decide to watch that at your house, whatever. Yeah. The minute that you open up and you praise that to those kids and you are their spiritual mentor, yeah. you've approved that. And it's it's kind of a form of peer pressure, if you will. I mean, I, maybe a little bit. Maybe that's a little far-fetched because <laughs> you're not really their peer and you're not necessarily <laughs> pressuring them. You good? Yeah, <coughs> you go. Are you Okay. <laughs> I swallowed down the wrong tube, Josh. Are you, with what? With I just swallowed my spit. Oh. I'm just getting really emotional, Josh. Yeah, this is a big deal. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I completely lost no, my no, train no. of thought. So, <laughs> uh, let, me, let me go back. So, <clears throat> I'm going to leave this in. Really? Yeah, yeah why not? <laughs> People hearing me hack up a lung. Yeah. No, but like, think about it. You, and, and I've talked about this before. I don't yeah. know if I've talked about it on the pad pod, on the podcast. The podcast. But I know I've talked about it before. Yeah. But the time that that's, that that youth pastor had watched that movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. You and have. highly endorsed it to everybody. And I'm sitting yep. there going, "What in the world are you are you thinking?" Yeah. And so again, it's that whole idea of like we are here to protect <clears throat> and to direct yeah. and to and to lead. And guess what? There's almost a little bit of you should expect it. You should expect the world to to look for our kids to act like the world. Yeah. But it says, do not be conformed to this world. Yeah. Uh, it says, love not the world or the things of this world. For all that is in the world is not from the Father, but is from the world. Lust, yeah. Lust, yeah, <clears throat> um, but like, it's natural. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> um, you know, even down to uh, one of my kids had a birthday recently. And we're sitting there going, she wanted to get some books. And I love the fact that my, my daughters are readers. Yeah. But she wanted to get some books. And I was like, hey, I'm going to look up this thing because it is yeah. my responsibility to protect and yeah. to help guide my kids. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like the, there's a new movie that came out. Everybody was talking about going to see it. And uh, the amount of people who came out not realizing there was nudity in that new movie. Oh, absolutely. And then I said, I was like, didn't you guys look it up? Like, I that's something I guess I was trained on. Oh, yeah. But here's the thing. I think the thing that, that we're, because we're, we're talking a lot about um, how, what we can pass down to our kids in our youth ministries, how it can affect them. I think how it affects them in peer pressure is if we talk about something and then we say, but you shouldn't do it. And we're not careful. The moment that somebody else presents it, they're going to say, well, Josh so did, did it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And he turned out okay. My parents <laughs> say that, you know, like, hey, I should, I should use him as a role model at times even. Like, I mean, even I've told the story before where the time that I spent while having a uh, kids in, from my youth group in my car with me. Right. And I went over the speed limit. Like now, every time I'm in the car with them, they're like, like, you know, speed, like, no, like that is, I see that as actually right. a gross offense to your right. parents. And I'm really sorry for that. <clears throat> right. But th now 
16 year olds in my youth group now, one of their friends says, dude, go over the speed limit. I mean, now he's being peer pressured right. and I've set a bad example. Right. And I'm not saying that's the reason they're going to speed or do something wrong, but like no. we've set up as youth leaders by example. <clears throat> Absolutely. We actually hurt the opportunity for them to say no to negative peer pressure. Right. Well, and, and again, you've, you've got these different situations. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I remember sitting in a men's Bible study uh -huh. <clears throat> with some of my peers, Yeah, but also some younger guys and the topic of personal purity came up. Yeah. And one of the guys around the table was like, you know what? I ought to be able to let any student of any age walk in and watch one of my DVDs. And I'm like, well, maybe not any age because like, I remember watching the incredible Hulk with my daughter when she was like three and she got freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> you scary. Know? Yeah. So obviously like you got to be smart and intelligent, yeah. you know, yeah. and what do you mean? I, we understand what he means, by <clears> but that. again, it's sitting there going like, yeah, would I be able yeah. within reason, yeah. you know, to say, Hey, you can walk in and yeah. you can grab any of the DVDs. I'm at, and I'm not going to have to explain it away. Yeah. No. And, yeah. You know, but yeah. again, now you've got a Now you've got a kid who's hanging out with, with their friends. And they're like, Hey, we're all going to watch this. I, Josh, I remember there was one time mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I was growing up, a buddy of mine, uh, there used to be these things called VHS cassettes. Sure. I've heard of them. I know. I, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we used to record things off of the television. Yeah. Yeah. And if you really wanted to be bonus like, points, if, if, savvy, uh, if you VHS could just said wedding, <laughs> wedding day or something. Like yeah, that. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Do not record over <laughs> record <laughs> the word I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, no bonus points. If you could pause it when the commercial break came on and unpause and, and go back to recording when the commercial break ended oh, so yeah. that you, which you still didn't get, you got the made for TV version. But again, yeah. I remember, uh, kid's mom, kid and I were at his house. Playing in Nintendo, I remember it like it was yesterday. We're playing Nintendo, and his mom came down and said, "Hey, uh, we're gonna record over blah and named and named a movie. Mm. And do you want to watch it one more time before we record over it?" And he was like, "Yeah, I love that movie. I love that movie. Why are you guys recording over?" She's like, "Well, you know, blah blah blah, whatever." <clears throat> and he goes, "Kyle, do you want to watch this movie?" Well, I didn't know what the movie was. I said, "What? What's the movie about?" Well, he told me what the movie was about and the premise of it enough scared me oh. as a kid that I, like genuinely, I was like, I don't want to have nightmares about yeah, yeah, that yeah. movie. <clears throat> and he was like, yeah, it's a, it's, you know, it's a scary movie. But I, but I also knew in the back of my head, my parents wouldn't want me to watch that movie. Yeah. I trusted this mom. Yeah. I trusted this kid. But I knew in myself I didn't want to, and I knew that my parents, if my parents went out, I'd, I'd been plenty of other places where I watched stuff I shouldn't have yeah, watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you not watch the movie? I didn't watch it. Wow. And, and I, sa I said, no. I said, I, I don't think my mom and dad would want me to watch. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. There's no, it, was, it was recorded off a of TV. There's nothing yeah. bad in it. And I just said, no, I'm really, really yeah. sorry. I really don't want to get in trouble. I really don't want to yeah. get in trouble. I really don't want to get in trouble. And so yeah. I, I said, listen, I'm not bothered. You go watch the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go watch the movie. That that makes me think of a point. About You're, seven minutes later, oh, sorry. the kid comes back and he's like, I don't need to watch it. Yeah. That's funny. You actually sat in the other room. I did. I sat in the other room. Nice. And, wow, I, felt, and I felt really stupid. Yeah, sure. But honestly, yeah. I didn't want to have nightmares. <laughs> yeah, no, that's super. Yeah. No, so that's actually from the point of a, of a parent. Was the parent there while he's like trying to press you into watching the movie or no? I, I can't remember. I can't remember if, uh, I think the mom was there for a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, and I, I genuinely think there's a chance that the mom came back down and was like, yeah. Josh, Josh, Kyle's, Kyle's, he's over at your house. He's and he probably was like, this is so stupid. He's fine with it, which I was. Yeah. I was. Now I should have been more spiritual as the nine year old kid to go, <laughs> But, but Josh, you probably shouldn't watch that either. I yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I was just like, I, I don't, I don't want to wake up in the middle well, of the night. I want to, yeah, no, I don't blame you. I want, I want to focus in on, uh, the, the mom perspective there. So like as a youth, you cannot have a mom perspective. Uh, you're right. That's fair. <laughs> but from a youth ministry perspective <laughs> of like being a leader, when we see two kids peer pressuring each other on something that might even be innocuous, like it's not an issue. 10 points for using innocuous. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I used it right. I'm, I'm curious if I did. Uh, it's like the meteoric. <laughs> yeah. If I'm wrong, oh well. So, but like, it's okay. Like, all right. So I remember, I I can think of times in my youth group now where I've seen kids uh, like pressure another kid to do something right. that they don't want to do. That's not a big deal. 
And uh, it's my, I think it's my role within reason. It depends on like, all right, it's like, hey, we're all gonna play this game. Hey, you should come and play this game with us. We really want you to come play this mm-hmm. game. Don't pressure him into into being your friend. Yeah. Like, you know, right. that'd be silly. Right. But there are times where I watch and I'm like, this isn't a big deal. Like, yeah, who cares if they pressure him into it? But like, I think it's, if there's a conviction of a kid or of the conviction of his parents, like, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this or I don't think I should do this or whatever. Like, we right. should be the advocate right. as the adult or even not as, or just, just as a, even as a peer, we should be the advocate of somebody who is holding their convictions. Well, but I think that the, that develops a foundation of trust. Yeah. Even with the person who's doing the pressuring, right. I think they're also going to see that there's boundaries being set. To know, hey, Josh looked out for that person. Yeah. But at the same time, you've got the other side. When I, let's say I'm sitting in a small group and I recommend a movie. Yeah. And then that kid goes home and watches that movie mm-hmm. and, and, the parent finds out and the parent's frustrated yeah. or that kid is like, Hey, you know, like I remember one time I borrowed a movie from a guy and, and, and I hate to only go down to movies, but it's yeah, so, it's, an it's such one. an easy, yeah. you know, target. Um, but I remember saying to a guy like he was, I, I was going through his DVDs. And I said, Hey, can I, can I borrow this one in this one? He's like, yeah, yeah, borrow, borrow it. Yeah. So I borrowed his, his DVDs. Well, one of them had a, a scene in it that was inappropriate and so when I gave it back to the guy, I said, hey, he goes, how was the movie? I said, I, I don't know, man. I, you know, I, I stopped watching it. He was like, why'd you stop watching it? I was like, well, this, you yeah. know, and he was like, what? I'm so sorry, man. Oh, like he, he, he was, it. he's like, dude, I, I gotta be honest with you. It's been years since I've watched that. Uh, I, I totally tell that. I was like, okay, well, hey, he's like, no, man, I, I don't want, I, I, I oh, he threw it out. I think he threw it out. I think yeah. he like got rid of it. He, he's like, he's like, I'm throwing it away. He's like, he doesn't actually throw it away. He's like, like, oh, yeah. I'm throwing it away into the other room. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, hopefully no, not. No, but like I sat there and I thought, wow, th- this is really cool. This yeah. was an opportunity for me not to say, how dare you not have the convictions that I have? <laughs> yeah. You know, but to just say, hey, can I, can I guard you? And so I know the movie that you're talking about that people, oh, that that people went to go to see. Yeah. I am so glad because normally I look it up as well. well. I look up movies as well. I didn't look it up. Yeah. And I had a buddy that I was going to go to the movie with. And he said, hey, do you know that, that there's, that there's like a couple scenes of nudity? And I was like, yeah. no, 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 it's not. Like yeah. there's zero premise to this movie yeah. to have, have yeah. that in there. And so I went and I looked at him and I said, bro, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, then- now, I don't want to be on this high horse, Yeah. but as I'm talking to people, hey, do you know that this is in there? Hey, do you know this is... Just because, again, are we there to guard and to yeah. protect our brothers in Christ, our sisters in Christ? Yeah. I actually had that um, conversation with someone the other day, and they said, oh, I'll wait till it comes out so I can I can put it on VidAngel or whatever. And it's like, here's the thing. There are people out there who the, that might not be their convictions, and you know what? Like, that's between them and the Lord. I'm going to let them work that out. Right. But for me, like, I don't want, I don't want to see... I don't want to go to a movie where there's nudity in it at the theater. I just don't. That's not something I want to have right. like in front of me and right. to deal with. And so I just don't. Right. And so, um, but yeah, there's, I've, I remember growing up, there were times where people would say, bro, why do you even care about that? Just like, if you're, if you're so worried about look away or whatever, like they, but I'm like, no, those are my convictions. That's what I want right. to do. Right. And it's, it is so easy for, uh, for us to even just now as adults, we can say, what's the big deal. Right. And peer pressure still. Right. And so if we're not able to say no to peer pressure, right. how do we expect to help lead kids in our youth ministry to right. say no to peer pressure? So let's- 12 let, year olds much more impressionable. So let's let's get practical. Yeah. Um, and I think these are, I don't, I don't think we're going to go over anything that- uh, That's groundbreaking. That, that, that's ground. Oh, you would tell kids to do this? Yeah. Uh, but Josh, how do you think, practically speaking, you're in a youth group- yeah. Um, how do you help prep those small group kids or even from the stage, that yeah, large yeah, yeah. group of kids to respond to negative peer pressure? Yeah, I think, I think the, the one that like I wrote down that really sticks to me is, is, uh, having open communication about just normal stuff and letting kids know that they can talk to you. Yes. And also, and this is very important, including the parents in the communication, which we've talked about. Oh, before. absolutely. And I think it's both and, and you're letting them know like, hey, your parents and I, like your parents know that we talk about this thing. We have meetings where we explain to the parents what we're going to be talking about. And they know we're about to talk about this subject. Right. And you talk about it in the small group and say, hey guys, talk to your parents or talk to us. And then, you know, and let them know, like, we want to all have open communication because we all right. want to see you grow. Right. I think that's a, a, a super easy way is there are kids 
who don't feel the need to be peer pressured into things they don't want to do right. because they have the safe haven of adults in their life mm -hmm. who don't need those things either. Well, and do have we set up a place where kids feel like they can talk about anything and not be, oh my goodness, you're asking about what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? No, for sure. But just that open communication, um, you know, that, that, that space to say, hey, this is... And yeah. when your kids mess up, parents, small group leaders, when, you're, when your students mess up, yeah. don't freak out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't flip out. Yeah. And that's really hard. Let's there be are, honest. Well, there are certain things where that's a little bit easier, and there's certain things that are super bad. Like, I mean, it, right. Sorry to, to go on a tangent No, 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 here, go ahead. Like, I think about training. Tange I'm gonna, away. I'm going to tange away here. I have a story, actually, where uh, when I was in middle school, I remember there was a kid who was like, yo, you have airsoft guns, right? And I'm like, yeah. Um, I grew up with a very healthy understanding of firearms, firearm safety, anything that w could be used as a firearm or as a projectile was supposed to be used with the same amount of safety as mm. an actual firearm. Like a BB gun, I had to use the same safety precautions right. that I would with uh, right. any of the firearms we had in our home because right. we grew up in hunting country. Hunting country. Hunting country. That's right. And so, uh, but I remember a kid said, you should bring your airsoft guns to school. Now, this was also at a time where like, if I had brought the airsoft guns to school, I would have been in a ton of trouble. I wouldn't have been expelled, but I probably would have been suspended. Right. Um, and it wouldn't have made national news like it would today. Right. Um, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that that was the situation where I was in where one of the kids said, we should bring in airsoft guns and then like we should like shoot the teacher with them uh, when, he, when they're looking at the whiteboard and then we'll all take turns doing it. And so they'll never even know like who did it, right? Praise the Lord that I had the sense to say no I'm not bringing my airsoft guns right. in for you to be able to do this. Right. And I think he brought one in and anything too. And I was like, no, I'm not going to be a part of this. Right. Now that's peer pressure. Like, and that's a, that's a situation, but because I had the correct training on how to use the things. Right. Like, I mean, all right. Drugs, alcohol, firearms. You had firearms. the correct training to use for drugs? No, 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 no. <laughs> But the point is like, if you are given, like you're taught. Right. What's right and wrong. And you're right. taught, hey, drugs are bad for this reason. Right. Alcohol should not be imbibed as as a as a person of your age for right. these reasons. And here's why. And here's the parameters we set for you. Yeah. Firearms, same thing. Right. Because I have that training. Right. I'm not. When he said, "Hey, you should do this," I'm like, "No, that's extremely dangerous." Right. Well, and it's and it's that whole old adage of you teach your kids about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not advocating that you sit down and you go into explicit detail yeah. of, of sexual things that are no, going gosh, on. No. But when you go to ex to explicit detail on guns, yeah. you can actually set your kids up for better success. Yeah. And it's not this elusive, fearful, or like mysterious thing that's going on. And so, yeah, you've got to like, you've got to figure out, but like drugs, yeah. all these different things to have this foundation of, hey, my parents, my small group leader is a place that I can ask honest, open questions, yeah. not be shamed, not be looked yeah. at weird. Well, and if you and, think that those things aren't a big deal in today's society, you're grossly mistaken. Yeah. Did you know that a study recently came out that uh, I think it was um, out of Europe, and I remember correctly, but the US it has such a drug epidemic and like problem that we're actually classified because of the drug use and the homelessness that comes from it and every, and the homelessness in general and uh, the healthcare involved with those things. We're actually considered a third world country oh, I bet. By, by the parameters and by the metrics oh, I bet. used. Like that's how pervasive right. drug use is. And here right. in Florida, especially we see it all the time. Oh my goodness. And, and so like even the other day, uh, one of my sons was like, dad, do you take drugs? And That's I said, crazy. I said, which one? How old? Uh, my, my 11 year old. Okay. Okay. I was like, still. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, dad, do you, do you take drugs? I was like, why, why would you think that? Yeah. And I was like, well, let, let's talk about this. And then he was like, do you drink alcohol? Now we as a family have yeah. decided, and we as Word of yeah, Life as employees, Word of Life employees are, uh, have, yeah. have, you know, are asked not to, mm -hmm. uh, but we as a family have, have decided we I don't think we would yeah. really strongly don't think we would. I can't, yeah. you know, it's like saying, well, sure. I will never move to, you know, I don't think I will ever yeah, move yeah, to yeah. Northwest oh, Iowa. Um, I don't want to move to Northwest. <laughs> Anybody on Iowa would no gladly offense. have you on the podcast. Um, <laughs> but you know, but, but you've got that, that situation. Well, yeah. here's the deal. It was pervasive enough in his world. Yeah. Even at 11 it. that there, that there must've been other parents yeah. that he was like, Oh man, if all those parents do, maybe my parents do. 
Yeah. And I was like, buddy, is there something in my life that you would think that he's like, yeah. he's like, and he says, I just thought I'd ask. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad in that moment I hadn't jumped down his throat or gotten yeah. mad or made How him crazy like, that you know, yeah. yeah. Because again, even in that situation, yeah. you know, I can, I can open myself up. I can have a foundation yeah. of trust. I can have this space where my son can feel safe enough yeah. to ask his questions. Yeah. And, uh, and so to bring he's, up that. Yeah, because if he has peer pressure at school and someone's like, like, hey, I have, I mean, here's the thing. Fentanyl is, again, pervasive here in Florida, especially. And it's contact. Like, oh, you yeah. can, if you have contact with fentanyl, you can OD. Right. And, and go into shock. And, like, right. there's dangers out there. And so, like, I mean, all it takes is a kid to say, like, oh, yeah, like, uh, let's go to this person's house down the street from my parents' house. Or, hey, my buddy over here. Right. sell us something like that's like we we kind of tiptoe around some of these things sometimes right. but they're right up the road I, there are kids where i know yeah. where in situations where they're like oh yeah my friend comes in and deals with us and like they're they're safer drugs quote unquote than right. some of these really like terrible ones but right it just it's well, and, so right there and so i think we have to train our kids i think we need to train our kids how to walk away yeah it, and it's okay to walk away. And to sit in the other room for seven minutes while they watch a movie you don't want to watch. Right, right. Yeah. And here's the deal. I had to be prepared to sit there for the hour and a half to two hours. Oh, wait, Which it was, is crazy. It was, it was in I, the 80s, so hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. You know? I don't um, think I ever had the the ability. Like, I don't think I would have ever been well, able to say no to that. And, and hold up. Before before I sound all like, wow, Kyle, you're so spiritual. Yeah, there yeah, were yeah. plenty of other times yeah. that, that like... I was at, you know, other people's houses that I was like, yeah. I really want to watch this movie and I'm, yeah. I'm not worried about that, you know, but, um, but, but again, do, have you trained your kids mm -hmm. that it is safe for them? We, we have a tech system with, with our, with our daughters cause my son don't have cell phones, but we have tech, tech system set up with my daughters that if at any time they text us a phrase, we come, we pick them up, no question to ask, yeah. no shame, yeah. no nothing. Hey, I'm going to come and pick you up and, and I'm just going to, and I'm, or, and I will be the bad guy. Josh, I need you to come home and I need you to come home now. Oh, my dad is freaking out. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. being ridiculous. Yeah. You blame me all you want yeah. because I want to be that safe place. But yeah. we need to train our kids. It's okay to walk away. Number two, I think we need to train our kids. It's okay to say no, mm -hmm. which is two totally different things. Yeah. One, I remove myself from the situation. Yep. One, the second, I stay in the situation, but I say no. Yeah. And I'm not going to be involved and I'm, and I am going to miss out. But I would say this, if these students don't understand the foundation of safety of that friendship, if they don't participate, mm -hmm. it's not, a, it's not a safe state. It's a, not a safe friendship. Yeah. Um, and then the third thing I think we need to teach our kids is it's okay to walk away. It's okay to say no and stay, yeah. but it's also okay to stay away. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, if I've got a group of friends that consistently are bringing, bringing me back, bringing me back, bringing me back. Yeah. And, and listen, everybody's going to make you feel like, man, if you're done with us, you're done. Yeah. Right? Um, but, but then I would say, hey, mom and dad, maybe we're a little to blame. Yeah. Maybe we need to go back and say, hey, I haven't taught you this, or I've made you feel pressure, or I've made you feel bad, or I've yeah. made you, or I've made you feel shame. When I found out that that such such and such happened, yeah, um, and and none of those things builds that solid foundation, yeah, of safety. Yeah, it's so hard. You have to be really careful with. I mean, that whole say. I mean, here I haven't gone through it yet. Like my my daughter is not old enough to work through the. Hey, does she feel safe or not? Like she feels sorry. She does feel safe, like in our home. But like, does she feel safe to confide in me? Like we're not at that stage in her life right. yet. Right. But I mean. As a as a dad of of teenagers, right. you have to deal with that. And as people in youth ministry, we're going to have to deal with that in some respect as well. Oh, listen, I I've I've already started asking my son, "Hey, buddy, are you looking at stuff that you shouldn't be looking at?" Yeah. Or oh, at is, eleven is, years is, old, is, that's is not there stuff coming across your iPad that yeah. you that you shouldn't uh, that you shouldn't be looking at. And, uh, and I'll be honest, there, there's there's a couple of times that his eyes will get like really really big, and I'm like, "Oh no, is this okay? Are we gonna are we gonna dive yeah. into this? you know?" But again, I in that moment need to go. Okay, I can't have my eyes get big. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't freak out. And guess what parents, some of you have been through those freak out moments. I'm not saying blame yourself. Oh, you're a horrible parent because you freaked out. No, listen, there are stuff that happens in my kid's world and my kid's life that I have freaked out about. And I've had to go back and say, Hey, I had the wrong reaction. Yeah. I had the wrong reaction. Yeah. But again, I've got to ask myself, am I setting them up for success? It mm. doesn't make sense for us to say, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, it's wrong, you can't do this, and then we're doing it. You've got yeah. to give them a better reason. Yeah. you got to give them a better perspective. Yeah, and that all comes down to, like, I mean, 
Are you helping your kids? Are you discipling your kids in your youth ministry, in your mm. home? Are you discipling them and leading them toward the Lord and giving them more purpose of why they shouldn't do something more than just, hey, it's probably going to have a bad consequence because maybe it doesn't. Well, and it's like we talked about this past summer with our purity night. Yeah. Shame and fear are motivators. Sure. But they are the weakest motivators. Yeah. Because as soon as I stop feeling shame about it, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to go do it. Or as soon as I stop being afraid about it. Well, now get my friends in here and I'm feeling shame because I'm not doing it or I'm afraid that they won't be my friend anymore. Yeah. Those are still motivators. And, cause yeah, cause you can make compromises. Absolutely. Compromises lead to steps. Absolutely. So yeah, you have to be careful. And yeah, I guess, I mean, honestly, like we would encourage you as people in youth ministry, as parents, right. Make the steps that you need to, to not just be complacent and not just not not hide your head in the sand either, right? Because it's so easy. Your kids can be peer pressured, and you just go, right. "Oh, they're they're gonna be fine. Like right. they're good enough kids. I, if I don't ask, then I don't need to know about right. it." And don't do that. Like it's not worth it. So I so I would say this. Let's let's roll around for or, or wrap around for the practical yeah, before we get into here. small group. Um, I would say number one. I'm sure you know this, but there are plenty of amazing resources out there, both Christian yeah. and non Christian resources out there about books, music, movies all that different stuff that can tell you what's in it and you don't have to watch it or listen to it. Yeah. And so even look, IMDb has that. Oh, oh listen, like, yeah. listen, honestly, I, I actually prefer IMDb's because they're yeah. like, Hey, this is, I don't need to go. Oh, what, what exactly is in it? I yeah, don't want Christian to know exactly ones, well, what's in Christian it. Well, the Christian ones write like a whole blog post about yeah. it then because they're yeah. trying to get you to look at the right. SEO. And so, and so, but, but again, look at those, look at those things. Check yeah. those things. You don't have to be knowledgeable about everything. Uh, but, but know that there are resources that are out there. Number two thing I would say is you don't have to talk about everything that you do. Yeah. You know, uh, I tell my counselors all the time, I don't need you to tell all these kids, all the Netflix shows that you've watched. Yeah. I don't. And, and guess what? When a kid comes up to you and says, Hey, have you, Hey, have you, you seen this man? Have you watched it? You know what I can do? I can change the subject. Yeah. Hey, can I be honest with you? I, I, I'm not really interested in talking about that. Hey, let's talk about yeah. this. Or kids are really just, I mean, you could just point at something and yell yeah. and, and they'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. Quarrel. Yeah. You know? But, uh, but again, I think just because it's going on, and, and to your point, there's a reason why this summer when I gave the purity talk, I didn't say, hey, let me tell you about all these things, or let me tell you about this person and, and how they turned out great. Because like you said, oh, so you gave your life to that and you still turned out okay. Yep. I, I can still turn out okay. I'm not saying that there's not a time and a place to have that conversation yeah. or discussion. Yeah. I'm but not just, saying you, you, it, it, There's so much of that where we just, we just constantly were – it's almost like we're glorifying. And I've been guilty of that where you oh. share a story, oh, yeah. but you're actually just kind of like telling, you're yeah. telling bar stories. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? It's like, it's like the people that are like, yeah, it was this and blah, 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 blah. And then, and then I came there to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. So I talked more about the sin than I did my savior. Yeah. Um, but I would say this, I would say again, know those sites. Uh, yeah. You don't have to share. And then again, what are you doing to create safe places? And I think safe places mm -hmm. are places where kids can share, where kids can ask questions and you're not going to freak out. Um, and then Josh, like I would say for them, are we teaching them that it's okay to walk away? It's yeah. okay to stay and say no, and it's okay to stay away. Yeah, I like that. Good, man. Hey, this Josh, it is time for... Small group. Small group. I they're going to say it with Small me. group. What? It's a group of us and there's two. So that's small. But we're still a group. I just came up with that. <laughs> Why don't you tell us what small group is, Scott? Josh, a small group is an opportunity for us to, you know, maybe maybe lighten the mood. Every once in a while, we've gotten a little serious yeah, at yeah, small group time. For sure. But small group, maybe we talk about uh, things that are happening, things that are happening in our world. Yeah. It may or may not tie in to, to the episode. To the episode. Yeah. And I'll be honest. I forgot what we said we were going to do for small Well, group. we actually already kind of talked about it, Did unfortunately, we? because we, we were going to talk about what's happening right now. Oh, uh, we can talk about it. Just kind of just, you know what, let's just do a share what's going on in your life part. So I will say this, Josh, uh, there's a storm coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, you know what, though? We just finished some stuff in our house, uh, making some space for the new baby. Dude, uh, Josh, that's so exciting. Yeah. I forgot you're pregnant. I, I, Another little it. Jedi. Yeah, yeah, we did it. We did a Star Wars reveal. I should post. Wow, that on I can't the believe you did that. Sometime. You, you, yeah. 
were so cool. Yeah. You wish you were cool. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no. Nobody I, did that when I when I was having kids. It was like, hey, reveals. hey, by the way, we're we're pregnant. Like, yeah. I think that was the most that we ever. You know. Yeah, no. If you guys don't, I mean, you probably don't know uh, many of you. Because Josh blocks all of his uh, social media. I do have it all on private. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. I'm a private person. I really um, am. I actually made mine private over the summer. Did you? I did. Are you gonna keep it that way? I'm leaving it that way. Well, let's talk about that. That's our new small group. Okay. I want to hear, like, so why do you have your social media private? I, I just want to be very careful about the algorithm things that come across my feed. Yeah. And so if I can control you, uh, not control you, but control your broadcasts on my platform. It changes. It what, changes. Yeah. It yeah, absolutely changes. I actually, so I went to the search on Instagram the other day and I saw stuff up pop up that I was like, I don't look up this kind of stuff. Like, what is this that's popping up on my searches? So I refreshed it. And then all of a sudden it was full of like cameras and, and like Star Wars stuff all over again. And I was like, why do you think it came up? Because of where I was. So typically like you'll have pictures of people at the beaches and everything. Like a lot of, a lot of the location stuff popped up. So it all popped up and I was like, I was like, what the heck is it? So I refreshed it and then it all popped up to what I usually look at. And I was like, oh, there we go. I was, yeah. like, I was like, what is this? I was like, I showed my wife. And I was like, I was like, this is like, oh, here, watch. And I did it. And it was cameras and Star Wars and I think a little bit of Spider-Man and some Marvel. And I was like, this is the nerd haven I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, this is the <laughs> safety place that I have. Well, but but again, and so I was, there was a certain bit of me that was like, oh no, am I, am I not making myself accessible to, but you know what? I don't have to follow you and you can still follow me. Yeah. Um, and so again, like, yeah, it's, it's, it makes it a little harder for people to message me. It makes it a little harder for people to reach out to me. Yeah. But again, I need to guard and protect yeah. my eyes and my flesh yeah. and say no to that. Um, and, and it's not that I'm sitting here going, oh man, this is a, this is a, a problem. I don't want it to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, so here's the thing, you don't need the appearance of a problem. You don't need to, to open up yourself to problems. My, uh, this wasn't for a problem. This was just for time. My, uh, a friend of mine actually deleted all their social media and messaged me and said, hey, uh, this is who I usually send all the TikToks to that I get to. So I was a little sad. They said, hey, I'm not going to be on social media anymore, uh, at least for a while. I just, I'm spending way too much time on it. Okay. Can, can I, I was so sad. Can I, can I, can I ask something? They didn't do a post. Yeah. Because I know but, you're going to talk about that. Why in the world? Hey, I just want everybody to know out there you're going to miss me. You're going to step I'm, on some toes. I'm, I'm going to be gone. People. Oh, listen, I will step on your toes. Here's the thing. You go and say bye to the people at the party individually so my friend said hey Abs i'm listen, gonna be on I social like media that. yeah i can respect that because you're gonna send me tiktoks and i'm not gonna get them hey anymore. this summer this sad. summer josh guess what i i deleted the facebook app yeah. which i know who's on facebook but i deleted the facebook <laughs> app i also removed the instagram app yeah. from my from my phone home screen so now yeah. i have to choose to go it's search not a natural it. thing search it. You know, and guess what I didn't do? I didn't go, didn't hey, everybody. just so y'all know, I'm going to... Now, listen, <laughs> I, I just think, like, well, if you're going to do that, yeah. why don't you also tell us when you're, hey, guys, just so you know, I'm only eating steak right now. See, hey, guys. Used, that's how Facebook used to be. Yeah. It would be like, so-and-so is feeling or so-and-so is... Oh, I, right, honestly, that? I, 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 I yeah. love that. Sometimes I go through my history <laughs> yeah. when, like, the, the, hey, a year ago, Kyle is, you know... Yeah. I remember I used to take, like, grandstands on Facebook. I, like... It'll pop up 12 years ago. I made a grandstand about like uh, how ridiculous it was that we were glorifying movies like Fifty Shades of Grey or whatever as a filmmaker. And like, I was like, I was like, man, that sounds so pretentious now. Like, you are pretentious, Josh. Yeah, maybe a little. Not bit. really. You're pretentious. I'm pretentious. No, but but I have listen, a I, I, I just pretend. I just don't get it. Sometimes, yeah. and I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this every time. I'm yeah. not even gonna say 50 percent of the time. But it feels like, hey, you all are gonna miss me. Hey, I just want, <laughs> I want you guys to like beg me, you know, and, and people are like, and maybe people are sitting there thinking, well, people will know that I'm gone. Well, maybe they will. Yeah. Honestly, at the same time, maybe they won't. And am I worried that people aren't gonna care that I've been gone? Yeah. And then I, and then I feel like I haven't been missed. And then I feel like, like the amount of people that are like, hey, did you see my post? No, I didn't see your post. Number, I'm number gonna, one, I'm gonna make this episode of clickbait where it says, uh, "Hey guys, we're getting off social media for a little while." Yeah, please do, <laughs> please do. Oh my goodness, that's funny. All right, man. I don't know, Josh. I don't know. I don't know, man. What do we know? We don't know anything. We don't know anything. We know that this is a safe, but you know what, Josh? I felt like this was a safe place for me to share that with you. Oh, I appreciate that. What a safe, what a safe place as a peer that you could share that with me. And I and and maybe they're gonna feel pressure to not post about 
getting off social media. You know what you should do? You should feel pressure to go and like and subscribe and follow us on Stacking Chairs. That's right. Yep. Mash that bell. Yeah. Share. Yeah, you know. Post. Uh, Everything. Hey, the community. It's growing, yeah, man. It's growing. We have some people joining. Not a lot being posted in there yet, but hey, that we have to build the foundation of the community. So but join we'd us. love to hear from you guys yeah. on that community. Hop in. Uh, you can find everything in our in our link tree, in our bio, Stacking Chairs Pod, everywhere on social media, email us, whatever. Hit us up, Kyle, because most importantly, you need to stack those chairs. <laughs> <laughs>